Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the hitting times and hitting probabilities for Markov chains that contain a mixture of transient and recurrent states. In previous videos, we have learned how to estimate these quantities by sampling. We have also derived analytic expressions that can be used to determine these hitting times and hitting probabilities. This video is slightly different in that I'm going to show you how you can write a computer program to evaluate the hitting probabilities and hitting times using the analytic expressions. In all the exercises prior to this one, we have considered the Markov chain with the transition graph shown here. As has been discussed in those videos, states 1 and 5 in this chain are recurrent and absorbing. States 2, 3 and 4, by contrast, are all transient. We thus know that if we simulate the chain for long enough, we are guaranteed to end up in either state 1 or state 5. If we are simulating this model, we might therefore ask ourselves two questions. The first of these is how many steps will happen before the chain ends up in state 1 or state 5. And then the second question is, how likely are we to end up in state 1, and how likely are we to end up in state 5? The first of these quantities is clearly a random variable, and if we introduce a number that is 1 if we finish in state 1, then the second of these random variables can be thought of as a Bernoulli random variable. As always, it would be nice if we can characterize the probability mass functions for these random variables. As discussed in previous videos, we can derive expressions that tell us something about the distribution for these random quantities. We can, for instance, derive the following expression that tells us the expected number of steps until we arrive in each of the in the absorbing states given that we start in one of the transient states h in this expression is a vector of expectations similarly we can derive an expression that gives us a matrix capital h of conditional probabilities for finishing in each of the recurrent states given that we start in each of the transient states I have discussed the derivations of these two expressions in a previous video, so I do not want to dwell on this again in this video. I instead want to show you how we can use these expressions to calculate hitting times and hitting probabilities with Python. Let's start this process by converting the transition graph that is shown up here to a transition matrix. This is a relatively easy exercise, but if you want, you can pause the video now to see if you get the matrix correct. You should have written a transition matrix that looks something like this. Remember that the index of the row is the state that you start in, and the index of the column is the state that you finish in. The conditional probability of making a transition from state 2 to state 3 thus enters the transition matrix from the transition graph as shown here. Now, recall from the discussion in the video on deriving the expressions for the hitting times and hitting probabilities that once we have extracted the transition matrix, the first step in solving problems of this type is to partition up the transition matrix as shown here. The top left corner of the partitioned matrix, Q, should contain the conditional probabilities of moving from a transient state to another transient state. The top right corner of the matrix, R, meanwhile, should contain the transition probabilities for moving from one of the transient states to one of the recurrent states. If we apply, apply this process of partitioning to our transition matrix, we can quickly see that the top and bottom rows of the matrix describe transitions that start in the recurrent states. These two rows of the matrix are thus uninteresting. All the elements of Q and R will be in the central three rows of the matrix.
States 2, 3, and 4 are the transient states. Q, the part of the matrix that describes transitions from transient states to transient states, is thus this central part of the matrix. R, meanwhile, is the remaining parts of the central three rows, as shown here. We thus arrive at the following Q and R matrices after we have completed this partitioning process. Let's now take these two matrices and enter them into Python. As has been discussed in other videos, we can create NumPy arrays to hold Q and R using the commands shown here. Remember that when we do this, each row of the matrix is entered within square brackets. To, to enter Q, there are thus three sets of three numbers in square brackets for each of the rows in the matrix. These three sets of numbers are then surrounded by a final set of square brackets and an NP array command. Let's now consider how we can use Python to evaluate H, the vector of expected hitting times. We're going to do this using the expression shown here. We can begin by evaluating the expression shown in the bracket. To do this in Python, we write a command something like this. The NP identity 3 here creates the identity matrix that is in our mathematical expression. This identity matrix needs to be a 3x3 three three matrix, as Q is a 3x3 three three matrix. When we add or subtract two matrices, we need them both to have the same shape. The output here, mat, will also be a 3x3 three three matrix. We now need to invert this output matrix, mat. We can do this in Python by using the np linalg inv command that Python provides us, as shown here. The final step in evaluating this expression is to multiply the matrix inverse that we got out from the np linalg inv command by a column vector that contains three ones. Furthermore, when we multiply this matrix by this vector, we need to follow the rules of matrix multiplication. Thankfully, Python provides us with a method for doing matrix and matrix vector multiplication. The function we need is called np dot, and we can use it to evaluate h, as shown here. Notice also that numpy also has an np1s command that works like the np0s command that you should be familiar with by now, except instead of putting zeros in the array, np1s puts ones. By using a couple of lines of Python, we can thus get the computer to evaluate the expected hit time, hitting times, which is great, as doing all those matrix operations with pen and paper is tedious. For those of you who haven't worked it out already, we can also calculate the hitting probabilities with, this, with the commands that we've just seen in Python. The code here is very similar to the code that we've just written for evaluating the hitting times and is shown here. The one difference is that the NP1s from our previous command is replaced by R in this matrix multiplication as one, one would expect this, given the difference in the analytic formulas. It is important to note that replacing a vector by a matrix here makes a substantial difference to the outcome of the calculation. For this command, the output variable, hp, 
is a matrix. We thus need to provide two indices in order to specify which element of it we want. As discussed in previous videos, the first of these indices is the index of a transient state that we are starting in, and the second is an index of a recurrent state which we would like the conditional probability of finishing in. For the command that was introduced on the previous slide, and that is repeated here, the output variable h is a vector. We thus only need to specify one index in order to request an element of the output vector. The index tells us the index of the transient state that we started in, and the quantity thus gives us the, ex the output quantity gives us the expected number that of steps that the chain will take prior to absorption. I hope that is reasonably clear and that you now have enough information to complete the exercise. Good luck and thank you for your attention.